Next week's election will reshape the state's top criminal court, and that could determine what happens to Robert Robertson, the man convicted of killing his daughter in 2002. Uh, he's at the center of a legal battle to avoid execution. Reporter Danielle Parrott has more on how this could affect Robertson's push for a new trial. Texas is one of only a handful of states that elects its judges via partisan elections. It's one of the highest profile races you haven't heard of, the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Most people look at judicial races and know very little, if anything, about the candidates. Earlier this month, in a 5-4 decision, the Court of Criminal Appeals upheld Robert Robertson's execution for the death of his daughter in 2002, sparking a back and forth battle of subpoenas and hearings that since halted the process and kept Robertson alive. Now, Robertson's execution date can't be reset until mid-January, but by that time, the court will have three new judges. I would expect that somewhere close to nine out of 10 Texas voters have no idea that the three Republicans on the ballot are not incumbents. Three Republican incumbents, Sharon Keller, Barbara Parker Hervey, and Michelle Slaughter lost their primaries in March. All three voted to allow Robertson's execution to move forward. Joshua Blank with the Texas Politics Project says judicial elections are typically low profile. The main driver in those votes is the party of the candidates. For Robertson, the stakes are high with the future of the court in flux. If the balance of the court shifts, his lawyers could get new legal avenues, but the all Republican court could also get more conservative. This does shine a little more of a light on the race than would otherwise have been the case, but not so in, to any extent that is actually going to change the outcome. So whether this all influences who voters select to be on the court remains to be seen. I was Daniel Parrott reporting. Prosecutors maintain Robertson's new evidence does not disapprove their case that Curtis died from injuries inflicted by her father.